Okay, I'm back with video 15. We're going to deal with human chromosomes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, now, the first thing we need to know about when we talk about human chromosomes and the way traits are passed from one parent to the next, recessive alleles play a major role. Uh, many human genetic disorders are called by recessive allele, which is a good thing for us. That means for most of us that we have to get the bad trait from our mom and our dad in order for it to appear in us. Now, there are some exceptions when we talk about sex link, but on average, recessive alleles, a lot of us probably have some bad mutations in our body right now that are recessive, but they're not showing up because we don't have two of them. We don't have two recessive alleles. Uh, some examples of recessive allele cause traits are PKU, phenylketonuria, Tay-Sachs disease, albinism, cystic fibrosis, and I'll talk about a few of these. <clears throat> now, there are a few diseases that are caused by dominant alleles. Now, these are bad guys. Because in order to get these, you have to only get one from either mom or your dad, and you get this trait. Um, you know, they're usually very devastating. Um, the main ones I can think about are Huntington's and dwarfism. Huntington's disease, um, you know, is kind of bad because once you get it, you know, usually onset, onsets at age 30 to 40, uh, it starts with a loss of motor functions, the ability to walk, talk, see, uh, eventually your heart stops. But, you know, um, think about if you're a dominant allele cause disease, you would have to be later in life when it onset. If it onset at birth, it would kind of kill itself out. So it's kind of like a smart disease, I guess you would say. All right. Now, when we talk about from going from a gene, you know, A, T, C, G, whatever, from the letters to the gene to a molecule, in both cystic fibrosis and sickle cell disease, only a small change of a single gene affects the entire thing. So... I just want you to understand that if you have cystic fibrosis or sickle cell anemia or disease or some, some disorders that we have, it can be caused by simply changing one letter out of this long strain of DNA and that could cause this disease to occur. Um, now let me talk about a little bit cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis I won't talk about because the most common genetic disorder among Caucasian people, especially people from Northern Europe, descent, and it's caused by a recessive allele that is found on chromosome 7. And in most cases, it's only caused by a deletion of three bases. So that's like A, A, T, T, C, C. Only three bases being deleted cause cystic fibrosis. Now, what cystic fibrosis is, and I flipped to the side, but cystic fibrosis is like a thickening of the mucus in the, in the lungs, and it makes it hard for the person to breathe, uh, digest food, etc. Now, the next disease I want to talk about is sickle cell disease. And sickle cell disease is most common among African Americans. And the reason what it does is it affects the shape of a red blood cell. Now, if I could draw it for you, a normal red blood cell is round and it almost like a donut because it holds hemoglobin in the middle of the cell. Well, a sickle red blood cell would look like a sickle, it would look like a moon, and it's unable to hold hemoglobin. And this is actually an advantage for people of African descent because. Um, there is a disease called malaria that attaches to hemoglobin, a protein, the protein hemoglobin. And if you have sickle cell disease, you're immune to malaria. Therefore, it's an advantageous. It's advantageous. Now, I just mentioned cystic fibrosis most common in Caucasians, and sickle cell disease most common in African Americans. Can anybody figure out why uh, a disease would be localized in a certain ethnic group? I'll give you a few seconds to think about that. And the, the reason is that, um, there's, there's several reasons, but the reason is that usually ethnic groups tend to marry with ethnic groups, even religious groups. Jewish people tend to marry Jewish people. So diseases are going to be found in certain sects of people, certain, certain groups of people. Um, and in Africa, you know, if you think about it, that if malaria caused death, um, and if you die, you don't unable to have babies. But if you have sickle cell disease and you survived because you didn't get malaria, then you passed on your traits. So sickle cell became an adv advantageous allele. Um, now the next thing is human chromosomes. I just want to refresh real quick. Remember, uh, well, I'm mean, sorry, I want, this is not an actual refresher yet. But I want to just tell you a few things. Chromosome 21 and 22 are the smallest chromosomes, smallest autosomes. And even though 22 is the smallest, it contains 43 million DNA base pairs. So just think about how much information is found in your chromosomes. 
Now, if chromosomes are found on the X or Y, which is chromosome 23, then they are called sex-linked traits. Now, if you notice down here, most genes are found on the X. Very few things are found on the Y because it's so small. So I, I, we won't talk about anything in biology that is caused by a gene found on the Y chromosome, but realize that a sex-linked trait could be found on the Y or the X, okay, even though we don't mention the Y. Um, colorblindness is a sex-linked trait. It's found on the X chromosome. Uh, regular and colorblind is found about one every ten male Americans, but only about one every hundred females. And down here is a simple test they would give you. I hope everybody sees the number 34 and 44 down here on these two square circles. Uh, if you don't, then, you know, something could be wrong. Uh, no, nah, just kidding. Then you should be seeing 57 in the left-hand side, and I've heard some people say they see 55. And the right-hand side, you should be seeing 15 uh, is a test for red, green, colorblind. But now let me give you some genotypes. A female, a normal female's XX and a normal man's XY. So if it's found on the X chromosome, a female, to have it, has to get it from her mom and her dad. A guy, on the other hand, he gets a Y from his daddy, so he only gets colorblindness from his mom, but he has it. Now, a female actually can be a third genotype. Let's say she gets colorblindness from one parent, but not from the other. Here, she, in big uh, XC, XC, she has colorblindness, but here she is what we call a carrier. She actually could pass colorblindness on to her sons but, or her daughters, but she doesn't actually have colorblindness herself, so it's kind of masked by that good one. Guys get a bad rap here because we only have only one X, so sex link traits are going to show up more often in boys than do girls, and you can look at the numbers, 1 in 10 males, 1 in 100 females. And it's because... If we get a bad one, if we're a guy, we get the disease. Uh, another sex or other sex-linked disease are hemophilia. That's the bleeding disease. And once again, you know, you can have a female to get it. She's got to get it from both parents. A boy to get it. He only has to get it from one. Uh, a female can be a carrier. That means she can have it in her body, but not actually show up. And that's when, like, somebody gets bleeding and they go and go. And we'll talk a lot about, we'll do a lot of punk squares with hemophilia. Um... Muscular dystrophy is another one found on the X chromosome. Females can be carriers. Males get it. They don't. Uh, male pattern baldness, not that I have it. Uh, male pattern baldness could be another one. If Guys, if you want to know if you're going to have hair or not when you get older, don't look at your dad. It doesn't matter if he's bald or, or has a lot of hair. You need to look at your mom because male pattern baldness is found on the X chromosome and you get male pattern baldness from your mom. Um, some chromosome disorders we talk about. Most times, chromosome disorders are caused by, oh, are caused by meiosis and are caused by non-disjunction. I've already talked about non-disjunction and what does it cause? Non-disjunction, think about it. What does it cause? We've already talked about We talked about karyotypes. I hope you said Down syndrome or trisomy 21. It's whenever we have a gamete being made with 22 and a gamete being made with 24. And I'm going to show you a slide. See, normally what would happen would be like the bottom down here with the blue. You'd have one chromosome going from each end when they line up during metaphase. But for some reason, you see at the top A and B, the, the, the black one chromosomes there, they both are going to the left. So what's it going to create? The, the gamete created on the left-hand side is going to have three chromosomes, and the gamete created on the right side is going to have one chromosome. So it's going to create an abnormality. That's where you get trisomy 21 or Turner syndrome and different things. You know, and there's different ways it can happen. It can happen during the first meiotic division, the first time that the cells split, or it can happen during the second meiotic division, and it's going to create different gametes. The main thing you need to know, though, is that non-disjunction causes most chromosomal mutations, and non-disjunction is the main cause of Down syndrome or tri trisomy 21. All right, I hope this had... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. See, Down syndrome... All right, let's talk real briefly about Down syndrome. Down syndrome is if an individual has three copies of one chromosome, and it's called trisomy. Therefore, they have 47 chromosomes. The most common type is trisomy 21. Um, you know, about one every 800 babies have Down syndrome. So, you know, we've already mentioned Down syndrome before. And here is a karyotype of Down syndrome. And I hope you can look down here on the karyotype. At the bottom, this person has Down syndrome and this person is a boy okay all right that is video 15 and I hope that helps you and I will see you tomorrow